Well, I better put this up. Atsushi Nakayama's Suicide Girl is a difficult manga to talk about out of context. The whole country of Japan at one point had the statistically largest suicide rate in the world. In 2011 alone, work-related suicides peaked around 2,700 people, while in 2020 it reached 1,918. Also within 2020, 16.7 out of 100,000 people within Japan took their own lives. It was reported at one point that suicide was a larger cause of death within 2020 than the worldwide pandemic during a 10-month period. It was the largest increase in attempts reported within 10 years, with a decrease in attempts being steadily reported from 2016 to 2019 beforehand. Largely blamed on the exhaustive nature of the Japanese workforce and the health problems gained from that, suicide attempts were also blamed on a myriad of issues, such as bullying, social isolation, celebrity suicide or death, and lack of proficient healthcare. Surprisingly, more women had attempted and sadly succeeded in taking their own lives than in years prior, partially blamed on sexual abuse among other systematic factors. This is without mentioning Aoki Gahara, also known as Suicide Forest colloquially, the controversies and legends surrounding it being infamous the world over. With such a sensitive topic, in Japanese culture especially, it's interesting to see a manga tackle the idea of suicide in a darkly comedic but oddly refreshing way. Nakayama's previous work involved a Danganronpa manga tie-in, as well as some psychological but action-driven sign-in of his own creation. However, none stand out as much as Suicide Girl does in his own bibliography, and I think that's a good thing. There was a trend within the 2010s after the rise of Madoka Magica for the Dark Maho Shoujo series, stuff like Maho Shoujo Sight, or Maho Shoujo Apocalypse, or Maho Shoujo Raising Project. Stories that purposely tried to subvert and parody the magical girl genre with dark and gory twists. Sometimes to an absolute fault, and the edge getting a bit in the way of a cohesive story. However, that's not to say that these stories are bad, they're just reflective of the time period they were made in, one built upon subversion and almost perversion of the Maho Shoujo subgenre of manga and anime, where the topic of this essay could easily fall into. Suicide Girl almost falls into that category, but it manages to stand out amongst its peers in a key, positive way. Our main character is Kirara Aoki Gahara, a bright-eyed, energetic high school freshman who decides to, shock of all shocks, kill herself. She does so at the Suicide Cafe, a place where a group suicide is planned among strangers and handled by the cafe's manager. Instead of everyone dying, however, the others besides Kirari are seemingly cured of their urges and self-doubts, while Kirari is left saying, what gives? In truth, she's been deemed capable to fight the demons that cause suicidal urges and drive the suicide crisis within Japan head-on, called phobias. This forces her to acknowledge her own fear of death, despite her motivation to kill herself in the first place, and confront these demons to save the lives of others, preventing their deaths from ever happening. To say it's offbeat is an understatement, for some it's probably incredibly offensive. Saying a demon drove me to kill myself is probably one of the oddest workarounds for mental health problems I've seen in a manga, but it also doesn't ignore them or the impact a suicide has on the people surrounding the victim, even tangentially. It handles it with respect to the subject matter, but also a morbid sense of humor and, again, oddly life-affirming in that way. After the first mission Kirari has, and her desire to help people lit within her, she's told that she can only help others on one condition, that being finding the joy of life. Kirari cannot fight phobias, or more symbolically, her own suicidal urges without enjoying the bright side of life, the silver linings despite the desperate situation she may find herself in. Her joy initially is saving people, or at least helping them through their dark times, while trying to reaffirm her own worth despite the loss she's faced on her own. Over time, it evolves into just being a beacon of hope, someone people can look to and be reassured of their own worth and well-being. And I think, despite how cheesy and fairly main character-ish that concept is, it's kind of life-affirming for someone with mental health problems. Look, I'm gonna be real with you here. The moral is staying alive, trying to push through the darkness that's within your head and around you to keep going. To stay positive despite it all, to know the weight of what a suicide attempt actually means. 
It's a positive story despite the edgy humor that may arise, and the idea of a suicide-themed magical girl actually having some weight other than pure shock value. She's met with more obstacles, a fellow suicide girl who wants to die young to preserve what dignity she really has, childhood friends quarreling and misunderstanding each other, even her own self-doubts about her motivations, and further affirmations about living. But despite it all, Kirari makes it work. She chooses to keep living, not just for the sake of the people around her, but for herself. Let's admire the craftsmanship on display as well. Nakayama's style is overly cutesy but incredibly well detailed and shaded. The use of drop shadow and deep blacks really contrasts with the sparkling and almost doll-like appearances of some of the female characters and scenes. Speed lines and sharp edges litter the page while contrasted with soft and bouncy lighthearted moments. It's really a masterfully drawn work, and it draws your eye from panel to panel from sheer curiosity alone. Backgrounds, too, are well drawn, whether it be cityscapes or the main cafe of the story or even a nightmarish forest. Nakayama's twisted line art and excellent inking paints a tapestry of disturbing Maha Shoujo antics that can only really be found here. To say that I feel slightly cheated out of more English chapters of Suicide Girl is a bit of an understatement, only having nine chapters translated into English while the rest exist online solely as raws. On the other hand, am I happy it exists? Yes, I can say that with a level of certainty I didn't expect initially. Sure, from the chapters currently released, it doesn't delve into the hard socioeconomic issues of Japanese culture that drive some of those suicides, but it's not looking to be a hard critique of them. Its goal is much more straightforward and personal, something most people can read and take away some core message from. An uplifting and surprisingly competent Magical Girl series with an edge that can be felt from its first few pages. Suicide Girl is a short little treat I'd recommend to anyone looking for a pleasant surprise, and even more than that, someone looking for some form of reassurance. You are not alone. No matter what you're thinking right now, no matter how you think about yourself, you are loved and cared for by someone who truly wants you on this earth. And you deserve to love yourself too. Trust me. Thank you for watching.